Good evening and thanks for joining us. Lac La Biche RCMP are asking for the public's help in locating a man who is wanted for more than a dozen warrants. Waylon Dennis Ballantyne, 19 years old from the Lac La Biche area, is described as 5'6 in height, 170 pounds and has brown eyes and brown hair and is of Aboriginal descent. RCMP say Ballantyne is wanted for a total of 16 outstanding warrants, including possession of a controlled substance for trafficking, dangerous driving causing bodily harm, flight from police, failure to stop and remain at a collision, dangerous operation of a vehicle and driving while suspended. RCMP are asking the public to contact police directly and to not approach him. Call 780-623-4380 or Crime Stoppers. His legacy lives on. A basketball tournament in the border city this weekend commemorated a man who paved the way for the sport in Lloydminster. Teams from all over Alberta and Saskatchewan gathered at the Lloydminster Composite High School for the annual competition. And for one grade 12 girl, it's more than just a tournament. It's a reminder of her grandfather, Hugh Morell, and his passion for the game. Anna Knotveit has more. His two passions were basketball and family, so I know this tournament meant a lot to him, and I know he'd be really proud to see me playing in it. But I believe my dad was the first phys ed teacher in the high school, um, so he taught over where the where the Neville Glass School was, and he was a phys ed teacher there, and then became principal here, and so he kind of started off the, the the basketball teams here in this in the city. The tournament has been going on for years, and organizers say it's not solely focused on Morel's basketball and coaching legacy, but his attitude towards the game. He was all about the kids and um, it's important to not get caught up too much in the sports of it but to remember that it's we're here for the kids and their participation in, in sporting events and athletics. And for Brianna, she says he was always one of her role models growing up and though he's been gone for a few years, she won't forget his support. He was always just like coming alongside my sports chairmen and cheering me on and he was always just doing everything he could to help out around the community. The effort and the toughness is what he really loved. You know, uh, to, uh, but but along with that sportsmanship. So I mean, be tough, be be strong, you know, be aggressive. But at the end of the day, don't be angry. The tournament will be a staple in the high school community for years to come, with Morell's values for the game on and off the court living on. <laughs> Anna Kanafeit, New Cap News. Cancer research has been ongoing for years and continually needs more funding. And those in the border city did their part last night. It was the fifth annual Rock for a Cure concert and this year was the biggest yet. And for some who have been touched by the disease, it was a special night. Anna Knotveit reports. I was actually at 38 at the time and um, I was told that I probably would not see my 40th birthday. Um, but uh, I fought it and uh, I'm here and I'm 44 years old. Rebecca contributes her recovery to a drug that was made possible by donations. And now she's been helping out with the I Love Alberta Boobs campaign for years. It's a daunting disease but Rebecca says she didn't give up hope. But I had an oncologist who told me that um, even if, uh, you know, they say only 10% survive, why not you? You can be in that percent. Buying tickets wasn't the only way to raise funds. TJ Eltman contributed more than $10,000 by shaving his head. It is absolutely amazing that he's doing this and it's his choice. When I said, hey, why don't I just leave it grow and start raising my money that way? Because obviously breast cancer is important to us all. I've had uh, some family members that have uh, you know, uh, had some, you know, troubles with that. And for all those battling cancer now, Rebecca says try your best and keep a positive mind. Fight, you know, believe that um, that you can survive and you can. Um, that was the key for me because when I was diagnosed, the prognosis did not look good at all. Anna Kanafate, UCAP News.